Well, good morning. Morning. Day seven of our adventures on Piano Azura, and it's a lovely sunny day again. Uh, we're sailing back to Malta now. But yesterday we were in Naples, and we had a very interesting day in Naples yesterday, didn't we? It was very interesting. So we wanted to go to Pompeii, which you can obviously get access from the port of Naples, um, and pre-cruise the excursions to Pompeii had sold out. Uh, apart from one that was called Pompeii and Naples through the lens with a lovely description saying about you get a guided tour around Pompeii and Naples sort of key landmarks with some guidance on the best photos to take and how to take good photos of what you were seeing. Uh, didn't quite turn out that way <laughs> but it still was an enjoyable day. It um, was, yeah. So the day started yesterday bright and early we were off the ship for eight o'clock um, and we were kept waiting for a while because our bus hadn't arrived. Yeah, and the area that they sort of told us to go and wait in was in full sun. Already it was early in the morning, but it was still full sun. It was boiling, wasn't it? It was very hot. Mm. We kind of suspected this excursion wasn't going to go as planned when there was somebody walking around with a big signboard saying selfie tour. <laughs> um, yeah. And it did turn out <laughs> that the excursion had changed in terms of what it was about than to what we were thought we brought. What we brought, yeah. Yeah, eff effectively the excursion was uh, walking tours of Naples and Pompeii, uh, followed by a gentleman, a lovely gentleman called Giuseppe, yeah. who had a frame, who were trying to encourage you to have selfies taken inside this frame that promoted their tour. Yeah. Um, but Which any, no one, we saw no one do it, even the children. See, <laughs> didn't see anybody do that. Yeah. Very bizarre. Anyway, it was about a half an hour bus ride down to Pompeii. Um, they made us all sign waivers and disclaimers for, mm. uh, which was quite odd. They didn't explain to us what these forms were, but when you read all the forms, we were on the coach. They were basically making a sign saying, you know, you don't hold them responsible if you get injured and all that kind of stuff. We've well, never ever had anything like that before, have we? No, that's a, no. a bit of an odd thing to Ooh. do. Um, but anyway, so but eventually we got to Pompeii and uh, we were sort of corralled into a, uh, an area outside the main entrance and we realised we got there before the site actually opened. Yeah, it opened at nine, didn't it? it? opened at nine, but there was already a massive queue. Mm. This is clearly a really busy attraction in this area. Um, so there was a huge queue there. We were given our radios and uh, with our earpieces and then we were kind of, when the site opened, uh, we were given our tickets and then we were led into Pompeii itself. We were actually split into two groups as well because we were a very we were a large group. What was it 48? 48, wasn't it? Yeah. So they split us into two and another lady joined us and we went with the other lady, didn't we? Yeah. Um, who then took us round and um, it was easier for them to um, talk to like smaller groups. I mean, 48 yeah. is a large group with for leading a walking tour mm. and it needed to, it really needed that sort of split us down the middle really just so that we could keep close enough to be in radio contact. If not well, that's it. We found that in the second half because with the second half, we weren't split into two, were we? And half the time, if you were towards the back, you couldn't even hear the guide. So. But Pompeii, mm. wow. What a place. Um, I've always wanted to go. You've always wanted to yeah. go. Um, Amazing. Really didn't disappoint. It's uh, very thought provoking, obviously, because mm. it's a tragedy at the end of the day. Mm. Um, but the the ruins themselves are incredibly beautiful, intact. Aren't and they? Beautiful. And we could have really done with being there for longer. It was quite rushed really wasn't it it was very rushed and, and rather than mm. being guided to the best place to take photos and things like that it literally was just keep up keep up keep up going around um and you're just trying to snap things as you're walking past mm. stuff with somebody chirping in your ear telling you what you've just walked past and didn't have enough time to take all the photos you wanted of <laughs> but um and also we only had an hour and a half on the site there mm. and we quickly realized that the site is vast and we there was lots of the key things on the site that we didn't see. That's right. Like yeah. the amphitheatre, mm. for example, you know, one of the best preserved Roman amphitheatres in the world, and mm. we didn't get we to that. Didn't get to that. Um, but, but if you looked at the map, it's quite a way away, wasn't it? But there's mm. so much to see, and you can't do it in an hour no. and a half. Um, but what we did see was wow. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? Was really mm. the stadium bus inside the bathhouse, yeah. just incredible. You just seeing the roads with the, the marks where the where the um, carts used to go up and down and yeah. 
Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, the bus, the mm. forum, lots of bakeries. I mean, there was there's yeah. so much to see. There was a pizza place, wasn't there? There where was. Used to make pizza. And, and some of the houses mm. and the frescoes on the walls just just jaw dropping. Yeah. And absolutely beautiful. Really enjoyed it. Could have done with much more than an hour and a half. And we were a little bit perplexed about the timing issue because they seemed to be rushing us because they were saying that the, the day is running to a tight schedule and we've got to get back. Um, mm. And then when we got out of Pompeii, the first thing they did then was drag us into a jewellery workshop and did a sort of a cameo jewellery demonstration. That's right, yeah. Basically a sales pitch, wasn't it? It was, yeah. The Luckily, though, the, the actual demonstration was quite interesting, but it, it only was about five minutes. And then they wanted everyone to go downstairs to have a look at the jewellery and stuff which we sort of dipped out on that and quickly whizzed around because we wanted to get the fridge magnets and things like that. And I'm quite, gr quite glad we did, otherwise we wouldn't have had time to do all that, would we? Yeah, we did manage to get fleeced mm. in a completely different way, though, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. It's very, yeah. very, very, very hot yesterday, <laughs> 36 degrees again. Yeah. Um, lemon slush. Was, yeah. Uh, so lemon slush was definitely the order. I had a gelato as well, because yeah. gelato a day keeps the doctor away, <laughs> that's what I've been told. Um, but. You saw a lemon slice, didn't you? Mm. Uh, come on, tell them how much well, the lemon slice was. Well, tell them how much a... change you got from a twenty euro <laughs> note when you bought two yellows, two lemon slices. Well, no, this yeah, yeah, this lemon slice. <laughs> I thought I didn't ask how much it is. This lesson learned. Next time, ask before you buy. But basically, um, I thought, oh, it's not going to be too expensive. It's you know, it's not going to be over five five euros a thing. It's get, probably going to be less than that. So I thought, right. Anyway, I bought it and it was eight euros. Eight euros cup. each. So yeah, eight you, euros a cup. You gave the gentleman so, yeah, 20 16, euros yeah. and he gave you four back. <laughs> four, yeah. Uh, uh, and you came so, back and I said, have you got any change? And you told me that. I nearly dropped it. <laughs> oh dear. It was, oh my goodness me. Oh God. When he told me the price, I thought, oh, but there's nothing I could do because mm, I'd already ordered yeah, it there yeah. uh, in front of me. And, you know, obviously, scammed <laughs> and, but it was refreshing and it was it was, it was nice but then we had to drink it really really quickly Did and try and melt it because we weren't allowed to take it onto the coach yeah. and we were like walk, just walking slowly around to the coach which wasn't that far away was it no, drink it as <laughs> so as yeah as and you know it was like sort of gold dusted lemon <laughs> lemon slush and you're thinking quick i don't want to really drink it that quick i want it to last but anyway there we go never mind <laughs> never mind so it was a wonderful trip to pompeii but far far too short um what we learned later on i mean that that excursion was very expensive it was over 70 quid each about yeah. 75 pound each or something like that mm -hmm. um and we could have got a bus from outside the port for t and a return ticket would have been 20 euros each yeah. and the entrance ticket into Pompeii was actually around about 21 euros did yeah. you say 21 so 21 euros, euros yeah. entry ticket a return coach mm. from just outside the cruise port we saw when we got back yeah. was 20 euros so we could have done it for 40 euros each or just over 40 euros each yeah. and we paid 73 75 pound each um yeah to do this this excursion Mm. Um, so a bit of a money saving tip there if you yeah. want to do Pompeii on your own and it is doable it's only half an hour on the coach yeah, each way so and you can have much longer there if you want to do it on your own mm. I think you know if we knew what we knew now we would we, we would have do done that. it on our own yeah yeah absolutely anyway that said we got the coach back to Naples and our guide well we lost one of the guides now so it was just one guide and one just, guide and Giuseppe, Giuseppe with Giuseppe. the photo frame <laughs> trying to get but people he, to take some back he, he was making sure everyone, he was really good at his job actually, because obviously you get a lot of these guided tours and people are whizzing off everywhere, take photos and that. So he was rounding everyone up at, at the back just to make sure no one was got, got lost. And quite quite good to make sure that you don't get pickpocketed yeah, as well. Yeah, we'd had yeah. all the warnings about the yeah. pickpockets. It was nice to have knowing somebody mm. was watching your back as yeah. well. So that was quite good. So there is an advantage of that. Mm. So, um, so we got back to Naples and then we were kind of led through the underpass uh, up into the city area and we walked into this main Galleria area which is the sort of the central uh, shopping area mm. isn't it effectively which is a beautiful building isn't it absolutely. it was yeah absolutely stunning and then we were kind of mm. dropped in the middle of the Galleria and told we had an hour to go and shop and eat if we wanted to about lunch yeah okay so lunch wasn't provided we had to go and make our way and find some street food outlets or a restaurant um, 
we didn't know where to go we went down out the gallery down to the left down found a little street food that seemed to have a sort was, of shop had a big queue outside out there so we thought oh okay. that must be good then and golden rule if there's lots of people eating there it can't mm. be that bad um and so we did queue an order um you ordered a pizza fritter pizza frit frit yeah pizza fritter, fritter um, yeah. and I ordered a Mariara pizza which yeah. is a, a local pizza it took about 20 minutes to come and we were waiting in the heat whilst well you, you were waiting in the heat I went across the shade yeah. and then a bit later on you joined me in the shade because you could still see the numbers coming up it was intense yeah. in the heat waiting for the food it was very nice the pizza fritter it was a little bit bland on its taste though for me um I like you know it was, it was sort of like a, a fried dough almost and it had like cheese and tomato and um, little bits of ham inside. But it's just quite, yeah, bland. I could have done with a bit more flavour in it, really. So the Mariara pizza got mm. uh, tomato, basil, oregano and garlic. Um, it, again, it felt, felt a bit like a margarita without the cheese. As, uh, but it wasn't too bad. It, quite, it was quite tasty. Mm. Um, went overboard with the tomato. It was dripping everywhere it was. <laughs> and I literally I ended up down my arm, my legs everywhere. Um, but... Yeah, so we ate that. We ate in a very glamorous location, sat on a oh, step outside. Yeah, with load bins. Yeah, by a load of bins. They're not very rock and roll. But, <laughs> um, so that was that. And then we had to meet back with the group. And then our guide then led us on a sort of a walking tour around the main sort of sites in the sort of central Napoli area. Um, yeah. And what do we take in on that? Or one of the fountains, we yeah. saw the Royal Palace, although we couldn't go inside because no. there's extra cost for that. Yeah, um, so we just saw the outside of the Royal Palace. We went, she was, I think she wanted to take us through the um, Royal Palace Gardens, but that was closed, wasn't it? Yeah, the central um, square. Yeah, so we took a picture of the, the horse, the horse um, outside, outside of the, the gardens, gardens yeah. yeah. We went past a contemporary, um, it's called um was it venus and rags venus and rags a bit venus of an art rags, modern yeah, art sculpture yeah art. And there were lots of places we kind of stood outside yeah. and looked at including the theater which is the oldest theater in europe apparently uh, we went to the castle nouveau um yeah. which is a massive great castle sat right you know just on the dockside area um again lots of chatter going on in the ears if your radio well, you works here half the time yeah you couldn't hear half the time. I'm sure it would have been interesting if you could actually hear the guide and what they were saying because she was clearly full of knowledge and facts. Um, but the radios just weren't full yeah. of. Full of the, well, the, <laughs> when we went to the the um, the Venus statue with rags, yeah. um, I couldn't hear anything, so I didn't know what it was. So I actually asked um, Giuseppe, and he yeah. told me what it was. Um, I googled it a bit later on and actually found out that not that long ago it had actually been um, there was an arson attack on it mm -hmm. and it had been burnt down to the ground so they had to redo it yeah, so, somebody had set fire yeah. to it but I mean I, walking tours if you love walking tours they can be great if they work mm. and, and you can hear what the guide is saying and you know taking all the useful information yeah. but the radio certainly my radio was just cutting in and out but, but, yeah, it was like that all the way through. Okay, eventually you ended basically up. Basically, had to be right on her heel to hear. Didn't yeah, you? and again, a large group of forty-eight. Yeah, getting close work, enough. Yeah, wasn't really. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, anyway, we went round. We saw a bit of bit of Naples, and uh, mm. and it was you know. It was pretty, yeah. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, mm. people have run it down when we've heard people, but I yeah. thought it was all right. So yeah. Um, then we were back on board the ship and we chilled out last night uh sat watched the sail away last night didn't we yeah as well as we sailed yeah. away there was a royal caribbean ship that went away before us we saw that go off yeah um it was another celebration night last night yeah so we had to dress up yeah there weren't as many people doing it last night i would say no um Far fewer. So Azura has two celebration so the buffet nights. Buffet was quite full, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> With people not dressing up. Yeah. So Azura <laughs> has two celebration nights a week. Iona has one. You know, Arcadia had two, didn't it as yeah. well? Um, you know, those are the one, P and A ones we've done the last you know, twelve months. Um, mm. But they will say it wasn't that well of here to last. Like, there were people about all in their tuxes and ball gowns and things, but mm. there weren't as many as earlier on in the week. No. Um, 
we did watch, we went and sat in Brodie's, didn't we? We had a nice glass of wine in there. Yeah, that was nice. And then we went to watch the sunset over, we sailed Beautiful. out past the island of Capri and all the islands off mm. Sorrento and the Amalfi Coast and all that there. And the absolutely sunset beautiful. over the islands was absolutely mm. stunning, wasn't it? Um, that was quite a moment, wasn't it? It was. Quite a moment. Yeah. We really Some enjoyed that. pictures, didn't we? Yeah, and um, mm. very, very spectacular. Yeah. After that, you wanted to go and see a show, didn't you? Yeah, because there's hardly been any shows on. Well, there's been, been shows, but not Broadway style no, shows. No, it? that's it. Yeah, like you say, there's, but not the like the headliners, called the headliner group, aren't they? Yeah. Theatre group. And um, so, yeah, so there was a show on last night and um, you came along. I, did, I mean, this, this was our second time in Azura in the last 18 months and we remember the entertainment last time we were on Azura being very, very music focused yeah. uh, rather than less show is. focused. Yeah. yeah, And again, it is very music focused again, it isn't is, it, this yeah. week. Um, so the Headliner Theatre Group are here, and but they've done two shows this week, we've seen. We've only seen one. Well, yeah, but there was another one we oh, missed. There was one that we missed, I think. Yeah. Was, was it the first night or it was something? The second night or something like second, that. Wasn't it? Yeah, well, there was we one that we tired, missed. So. There weren't, there's not many shows going on from the sort yeah. of the Broadway style shows. And if you like that, Azura isn't the ship for you. There's loads of great live music acts and things like that. But. Yeah. So went to the show and it was Electric Avenue and it was right it up was. your street, wasn't it? I enjoyed it, yes. Um, but this time we weren't allowed to do any videos or anything like that. No, it's very strict. unusual. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we encountered mm. that on Iona with the Gary Barlow thing. And, um, but yeah, again, but you'd here, understand that one, but... They were the pretty, we were allowed to. pretty direct mm. in saying you're not to video anything yeah. under any circumstances. Yeah, put your phones away, basically, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, mm. um, which is a bit of a shame, so we can't show any footage. No. Um, but you liked it. I liked it, yeah. We did a review at the end, and I liked it. This one. I'm grumpy. He's the grumpy one, yeah, so. Exactly. Yeah. Not my kind of thing. He doesn't like that sort of thing, so I don't even know why he bothers coming. But. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we won't leave us there. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> so we saw that and then we went and had another glass of wine. We went to Glass House. Mm, um, last yeah, night. get your favourite glass of wine. You love that. Don't the grey, wacky Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. <laughs> wow, that's a great bottle. Um, very, very nice. And enjoyed. So we sat there chilling out, and the Glass House is a nice vibe as well, isn't it? It's, it's nice yeah. and relaxing, isn't it? And you don't have you to don't, eat there. No, you don't have to eat there. There's a certain area you can go and sit there and drink. Yeah. It's, it's, just does wines in there anyway. Just a wine bar. Yeah, just wines. But so. very, very nice. Mm. Very, very nice. And that was that. So we're at sea today and we're sailing back towards Valletta and tomorrow is our, well, suddenly we go home. Yeah. We've got the very last mm. flight. <laughs> so we yeah. hopefully we'll get some time in Valletta in the morning. We're still trying to work out the logistics of it all. But I'm hoping we'll get a couple of hours ashore in the morning before got having to bags. do bags out tonight don't yeah, we? Usually yeah, usually you've got to put your bags out, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, so hopefully our last, very last day will give us a couple of hours for sure in Valletta is what I'm hoping. And today, and, just to say, today is mainly going to be chilled. I've got, I've got a good book just over there. <laughs> That's right. That's actually calling me to do lots of reading, so I need to do more yeah, of that. Yeah, chilling out, we've got our lovely balcony, we bought some nice cold, um, some drinks and we've got them in the fridge, so yeah. they're nice and cold so we can have those. And with the ship yeah, be being nice. as busy as it has been, because mm. the ship is round, is. Um, having the balcony has been an absolute godsend this week. We you couldn't get anywhere near a pool. I'll tell you what, you look at the pools, you can't get in, it's just filled with children um, and it's you can't, can't even get into a pool. Um, find, finding a sun lounger, you'd basically have to go and put your towel on there about five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so yeah, so we got a balcony, so that's and great. And they've made announcements about sort of like yeah. sun lounger etiquette and reserving them and their ship onboard ship policy and stuff like that. But that's clearly been a problem. They've clearly had issues because they're, mm. they're having to repeat and reiterate those yeah. statements about uh, sun lounger policy quite frequently. So um, mm. I'm glad we got this. Yeah. So, Anyway, so thank you for joining us on this adventure. Yeah, thank you. Around the Mediterranean and down the Italian coast. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. We'll do one more vlog uh, when we get home and we'll tell you about our day at sea and hopefully we can get a few hours in Valletta before flying home back to the UK. But hopefully you've enjoyed our series and thanks for watching as always. Thank you. Bye. Supporting our channel helps us make more content like this and the easiest way to do that is to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks very much.